They came from the toughest neighborhoods of Toronto, lured to Alberta, the promised land of money and jobs. But for too many young Somali Canadian men, it's where they came to die. 31 bodies? Is that normal, unsolved? This is the story of one of those young men. Then they said, uh, the Nazi is dead. I said, what? The Nazi is dead. It's the story of one family and a Canadian dream gone very wrong. We know the person that shot and pulled the trigger. What happened when you roll through my hood? Start from left to right, nigga. This something not gonna be nice. Not gonna be nice at all. You gonna get it, nigga. Tonight is a perfect night of fight. Here I come. Good evening, I'm Jillian Findlay. The young man's name is Abdi Nasser Deary, and these are the streets where he grew up. By all accounts, he should have been a Canadian success story. He was bright, educated, motivated to succeed. But instead, Abdi Nasser Deary is dead, one of dozens of young men from this community who went west looking for opportunity and who never returned. What happened and why are questions that six months later his family still has no answers to. Tonight, we'll take you inside their story, deep inside a community and a world that most Canadians have never seen before. Like many Somali immigrants, their story begins in violence. In the 1990s, warlords ruled Somalia, and as battles for power intensified, no one was safe. Hello. As the fighting spread, parents who could picked up their children and fled. Among them, schoolteacher Abdul Qadir Ali. It was civil war. It's very bad civil war at that time. The civil war is uh, the bomb shell and everything is too much problem. And uh, we ran away from homes. We left over there and we came here and, uh, to escape our life to anywhere in the world. After stops in Dubai and New York, they joined the stream of Somalis finding refuge here in the public housing neighborhoods of northwest Toronto. Tell me about your decision to come to Canada. What, why did you choose Canada? Canada, I come to Canada. Canada is, um, is a safe place. Fadu Modiri was Abdul Qadir's wife. They would eventually separate, but not before their family expanded. This is Abdul Nasser, for uh, the time he's um, great for. Of their five children, it was Abdi Nasser, her middle son, that she was closest to. The first to be born in Canada, he embodied all the sacrifices, all the hopes and dreams. And I come here. And I, I, I'm safe because I'm working. I find the education, and my kids, they find the education. In his mother's house, education was important, and Abdi Nasser, G-Baby, as they called him, did well. Sweet-looking and chubby, he was the kind of kid who could speak his mind and get away with it, even in a tough neighborhood. Because he's my brother, I, I hate him sometimes because the things he says or does. Iman Ali, Abdi Nasser's older sister. When other people's eyes, he's a little cute, cute little G baby. He's so cute. He's so outgoing, outspoken. He says things that will piss you off, but then you always laugh about it because you can't take things like him. You won't take him in. And make no mistake, Jamestown Crescent is tough. 
Doomstown, they call it. A place where a police officer can find a snake planted in his cruiser, and where raids are commonplace. Drugs, gangs, guns, it's all here. And for Fudumo, a single parent working several jobs as a cleaner, it's been a struggle. I know I'm tired because I'm working the hard job because mm -hmm. scrubbing, mobbing, cleaning. I come home, I'm so tired. Growing up there, I guess she didn't have a lot of people helping her, especially my dad. And we moved to Jamestown and then she decided she didn't want to clean no more. So she went to school and she graduated and then she became a nurse. It's that kind of drive that people who knew him say Abdi Nasser inherited. Hoda Muhammad, a neighbor and a friend. He was very smart, humble, nice, but he was also determined to do the best and stay on top. He didn't want to be number two, he always wanted to be number one. That was clear on the basketball court. Despite his small size, he's remembered as a more than decent point guard. A kid his coach says sometimes needed reminding that he didn't have to be the tough guy all the time. He's a very good person. At the same time, the area that he grew up was he had to be tough. So I had to talk to him about that. You know, he can just lay off and, and be relaxed when he's here. You know, and, and, and he can have a good friends in this program. Like a lot of kids of immigrant families, Abdi Nasser straddled two worlds. At home, he was the doting son expected to work hard and succeed. But then there was that other, bigger world outside his door. For young, ambitious men, Jamestown Crescent is full of diversions and temptations. By the time Abdi Nasser reached high school, he was running with a different crowd. Friends changed him, and he just thought he was a thug. He thought he was a thug? Yeah. What did he do that? Just the way he dressed, the way he talked, the way he would move, the people he's with. What do you think it was that attracted him to that? The gang, the violence, I think. He liked The them? people. The people in Jamestown, it's mostly violent stuff. You would hear or see kids getting beat up or running around. It's not really good things. Robberies. If he was involved, he never got caught. Instead, Abdi Nasser graduated and found a part-time job. But as the summer of 2009 approached, it was clear the hood had left its mark. His yearbook references are to local posses. SGC stands for Somali Gangsta Crips. He commemorates neighborhood kids who'd been killed. Abdi Nasser had talked about going to university after high school, but almost overnight, his sister says, his plans changed. And I remember I asked him for $100 that day. He said, no, I'm going to save this money. I'm going to buy a ticket and go to Alberta. When we come back, a son heads west, and his sister disappears. We started calling doctors, hospitals. Like, it was to a point where Maybe something tragic happened. Fort McMurray, Alberta, black gold, and the age-old promise of fast, easy money. It was September 2009 when Abdi Nasser Deary showed up here. He'd left Toronto without telling his parents. <laughs> 